Hello, ladies and gentlemen, crypto deep divers. Welcome back to Weekly Crypto. Today, I'm going to talk about Facebook. So Facebook is going to launch their own cryptocurrency global coin. They're going to have an announcement this Tuesday. And also a touch on Binance and Bitcoin as well. Just in case you're new to the channel, just to remind everybody that you can earn EOS in Coinbase up to 10 bucks. And also you can uh, earn Stellar Lumen as well in Coinbase as well. And Ontology, they also give away 10,000 ONG token. So all you have to do is join the Ontology English Telegram group. And in the last 28 days, you have to send out one message in order to qualify. So they're going to do a, a announcement. If you're 40,000 members, 100 winners, 15,000, 50,000 members, 100 winners will be announced by July 10. If you're interested, you can check it out. And before we get into that, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out the upcoming airdrop giveaway or hard fork or token swap. Also, you can follow me on Twitter as well. So basically, Facebook is going to launch their own cryptocurrency and they're going to have an announcement this Tuesday. It's basically a white paper. The official coin they're going to launch in probably on January, the first quarter of 2020. So he make, she, she made six predictions. So Caitlin Long, uh, she used to work in Wall Street for almost 20 year, 22 years. She is a Wall Street insider. <clears throat> and earlier on, she published an article about rehypothecation and commingling. In, uh, I think if you listen to my channel, you are well, uh, well aware of these two terms. So if, you, uh, if you're new to the channel, you can go back to my previous video. I will maybe drop the link as well about rehypothecation and commingling. And all the Bitcoin um, or cryptocurrency token holder need to know what are those two terms. Because when Wall Street come in, they are going to rehypothecate, basically diluting the value of Bitcoin using all this um, paper Bitcoin and commingling, basically the commingling uh, Bitcoin along with all this junky asset. So I think it's very important to understand um, all these things because um, institution uh, is already into the cryptocurrency. So will be, and then uh, if you don't know what they want to do, you're going to lose out all this money or whatever. <clears throat> Not a financial advice, it's a due diligence. And so Facebook, they are going to launch, uh, Lib, uh, I think it's Libra. It's a global cryptocurrency. Um, basically, you can use messaging or WhatsApp you can uh, spend your money in the merchants and you can use uh, for online purchase and uh, also grocery restaurant and all that so this is like a stable coin and this is backed by a basket of fiat currency so remember fiat currency is not backed by anything it's not backed by gold it's not backed by silver or anything it's basically they're printing money out of thin air basically and china Japan, US, of course, they are printing money like crazy. And especially in Japan, they have begun, uh, uh, they're printing money like crazy as well because of the, um, you know, the economy of Japan uh, because of the aging population. And in order to stimulate the economy, they are basically printing all this crazy money. And all the countries are printing money nowadays. <clears throat> so, so let's get back to this. Um, so here is her six predictions. So Facebook cryptocurrency will be a powerful force for good in developing countries. This is where Facebook intend to market the product. And the reason why is because central banks in developing countries are notorious for, the, for their lack of discipline in maintaining uh, the value of the fiat currency. Look at what happened in Venezuela, right? So Venezuela is even worse than uh, Walmart Germany after World War I. The hyperinflation, uh, irresponsible fiscal uh, fiscal um, accounting, fiscal policy, and corruption, and people go to in Venice in a Venezuela. People basically use Bitcoin to preserve their whatever money they got. You know their hyperinflation is insane over there. <clears throat> and so basically, in developing world, uh, they can maybe you can they can use a stable coin like Facebook. So that will indirectly uh, exert like fiscal and monetary discipline on those developing nations. And number two prediction is Facebook will pay interest to, to the holder of its cryptocurrency. And this will eventually lead to populist call to repeal corporate subsidiaries to banks at the heart of the U.S. banking system. So right now, 
uh, it's interesting. The Federal Reserve is uh, basically paying two point three five percent to the uh, to the to the to the banks for the interest on excess reserve, and this is projected. Uh, this is equivalent to thirty six billion of corporate welfare paid to the U.S. banks, and which is roughly half of the amount the U.S. spent on food stamp. Program. This is <laughs> this is interesting. So they basically they they pay more. Uh, they pay roughly half of the um, the corporate welfare to the bank um, instead of uh, doing all this good to the uh, to the people. Oh my! The reason why they pay interest is simple because uh, if you buy this, uh, if you buy the Facebook stable coin, right? So Facebook, uh, uh, they are going to put all this, put uh, some of the money to U.S. Treasury. They are going to get probably two percent or whatever percent uh, percentage. I don't know how many, how much percentage they are going to get from the uh, safe deposit or U.S. Treasury or bonds or whatever. And with all this money, uh, the people who hold the token, uh, at the end, we realize that they're sitting all this money and earn interest and they get nothing. So the people will say, hey. Uh, you got to share interest to us as a token holder as well, right? Because uh, this is a, as they said, this is a stable coin. They want to get interest as well, just like you have money in the bank. You want to get interest, but the thing is nowadays the money in the bank, uh, the interest is almost negative, right? It's like zero percent. You have to pay them to open an account. You have to maintain a certain minimum balance to avoid the uh, fees and all that crazy stuff. Instead of, you know, instead of they paying you to open a bank account because my money is there. You have to make sure that you don't have any transaction fee or any other fees to maintain a certain balance. This is crazy, right? <clears throat> and Facebook's foundation will grow to garner big power in global capital markets. So basically, they set up this uh, this organization, uh, Facebook. They set up this company in Switzerland, which is a, a smart move because that can uh, defend against antitrust uh, antitrust allegations and also reduce the degree of cryptocurrency centralization as well and a lot of a lot of companies want to jump on the bandwagon on the stable coin is because uh, on one thing they have 2.3 billion uh, users already all these people will have a potential of purchasing power and also um, that can be in the future, that may be similar to an index fund like Dow Jones or S and P. Um, that is pretty interesting, and and also they're saying that uh, Facebook is selling the right to participate in the network for ten million each, because basically you are tapping tapping into a two point three a billion users, right? And another thing, you have all the data from all these two point three billion users and the habit. Uh, what they like, and then the purchasing habit, uh, what they like, what they share, and then they go through the algorithm, and then they sell all this data, uh, they market your data to the advertise, advertiser, and then that's how they get the advertising effort, uh, revenue as well, right? And this is pretty interesting, like 10 million each, you, uh, usually the transaction is process as minor in the cryptocurrency market, I pay for the services, and right now they're going to do like if you want to join, you know, participate in the network, pay me ten million. <laughs> and also this is a honeypot of data as well. And they can, you know, they can tell like your buying habit, your purchasing habit, and this is scary. There's no privacy, you know. So of course everybody wants to get involved with these things. And Facebook will also face regulatory uncertainty. Uh, which shed light on many outdated financial regulations in the process. So, will the regulators see Facebook's uh, cryptocurrency as a security, um, or they see this as a currency because you can use this to buy a cup of coffee? And also, this is a honeypot for uh, data for the government, whether they pay taxes, whether they transfer a huge amount of money out of the country. You know that will be. There will be, you know, there will be too much uh, control because if you are going to do do this uh, global coin, you you have to go through the KYC, so they know they know you. So you basically turn all your personal data to them. And Facebook regulatory reporting program will open all kinds of interesting discussions. <clears throat> so the. So because they have two point three billion users, these are real users and. 
but we'll see how many of them are really real users. Maybe some of them open a fake account, we don't know. And then they have to prove their identity. You have to go through the know your customer KYC compliance uh, process. In, uh, and they basically have all your data. And so basically, this is uh, uh, saying the same thing. This is a huge honeypot for data. And uh, how the users spend the money, their privacy, the tax reporting uh, imp implications, and also all these transactions can be traceable by the government. And uh, yep, 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 yep. So this is this could be potentially dangerous. You know, they will say, um, you know, your. I mean, this is a privacy data. I don't think I will use it. I mean, I the number one, um, those. Global coin, the, uh, the global coin is backed by fiat currency. Fiat currency is not backed by uh, nothing. So what's the point, right? I would rather stick with cryptocurrency, you know? <clears throat> That's just my uh, personal opinion, not a financial advice. I mean, if they don't need to go through KYC, I may consider that. But they are going to go through KYC. Who, I mean, who, who is going to use it? You, you expose your personal uh, privacy and your personal data to all, uh, all open up to, you know, in Facebook. No way. <clears throat> And Facebook cryptocurrency will turn out in the end to be a Trojan horse that benefit Bitcoin. That is, this is one of the biggest, biggest. I mean, this is one of the biggest benefit of this. Um, the reason why is because uh, Facebook uh, will bring more like mainstream adoptions, like mass adoption. Uh, people will learn more about cryptocurrency and stuff like that, or virtual currency. Then they will learn more about Bitcoin. And then people eventually realize that Bitcoin is scarce. Uh, is is a scarcity of resources and store of value. There's only twenty one uh, million Bitcoin, and seven million Bitcoin is already lost. So that's that's we are less than twenty one million basically. And Facebook cryptocurrency global coin is not scared. I mean, it's not like they can they can print anything they want, right? Basically. <clears throat> so and this will introduce people know more about cryptocurrency they feel uh, more comfortable using uh, cryptocurrency then they will know more about uh, Bitcoin and all that and this is very similar to in Venezuela remember back uh, Maduro they introduced the petrol cryptocurrency uh, the petrol the cryptocurrency backed by the uh, oil in Venezuela and eventually and then this educated the Venezuelan to know more about the cryptocurrency the Bitcoin right so this is a good thing actually to the uh, cryptocurrency community. So this is the six predictions she made. Uh, let me know what you think about this. This is pretty interesting. <clears throat> Please drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you. So the next stop, I'm going to talk about uh, Binance. Binance is going to stop serving the US customer starting on September 12th. And I'm not surprised uh, that it's going to happen because I'm actually I'm surprised it takes so long for Binance to do something like that because uh, I I suspect the US is going to eventually um, go after Binance and this is exactly what they're going to do so they are going to open another platform uh, Binance just to serve the US customer then you have to go through the KYC uh, submit your personal data you know just like uh, you open an account in uh, Coinbase or Gemini you know stuff like that so <clears throat> you can argue that you can use the uh, VPN, like the virtual uh, the VPN uh, to to pretending you are from another country, not from the US, to get access to Binance. I mean, you can do that too, but then there's a, also a security issue if you go through the VPN. And another thing, the traffic volume for Binance, almost like 40% is coming from the US. So with this, uh, with they stop, with, uh, and they stop serving the U.S. customer. Will that do you think will that affect the Binance BNB token? Is the BNB token will be still valuable as it right now? And because of the IEO and all that, and maybe some people will just go using the VPN to get access to their account. But some people maybe just transfer out or um transfer out of the Binance. You know, using some other ex decentralized exchange. So I don't know. This may affect the price of BNB token. I'm not creating fun or anything. But anything like that uh, with the U.S. regulatory and all that, uh, it's, there's a lot of uncertainty. So, and also Binance token have been going a very run, uh, you know, a big run up since I think last year is like seven, the end of last year is like $7 of Binance coin. Now, now go all the way up to $33. So, 
So I don't know. I'm not sure because of this will affect the BNB price. So I'm not creating thought or anything. Just uh, I just throw it out there and let you guys think about it. Please comment below. Let me know what you think about the Binance token. <clears throat> so the next stop uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Bitcoin. So uh, today the crypto fear and greed index is extreme greed. <laughs> I think last week is like 46. I think at the time Bitcoin was around 7,700. All of a sudden this week, it goes all the way up to 9,004 or something. Um, this is so, uh, I mean, it's crazy. Anyway, um, let me... So I talk about the uh, Mayer Multiple Index. So basically the Mayer Multiple Index is you use the Bitcoin price divided by the 200 day moving average. So you got the ratios. So if the ratios is less than 2.4, based on historical, I mean, based on the uh, the, the analysis, if you invest uh, Bitcoin $100 every day, as long as if you buy below 2.4, uh, the ratio below 2.4, you're going to have a positive um, return uh, of the, of the um, you're, go you're going to have a positive uh, outcome of the uh, Bitcoin that you put the money in. So, so right now, the uh, mayor multiple ratio is 1.84. I think last week is 1.48. So uh, people, like a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers is saying that, oh, we are going to go up to 12,000, we are out of the bull market. Or some, and then the next day when the Bitcoin dropped to 7,700, they will say, oh, we are going down to 5,500 or 6,000 or whatever, whatnot. I mean, to me, I mean, you don't want to be schizophrenic, you know, listen to all these people saying different things every day, you know. Um, maybe I'm just saying dollar cost averaging uh, instead of all this thing. And maybe this multi, uh, major multiple, uh, you can utilize this ratio to make your judgment. But this is not a financial advice. Use your due diligence. I mean, if you are, if you are a swing trader, of course, you have to look at all this uh, thing all the time. But if you're a long-term investor, investor you have, you have three to four years horizon uh, i don't think uh, whether the the market is bottom up or not does it matter i mean i mean as long as you're not chasing the high that's the thing right so instead of like follow all these people hey today we're going to go up to twelve thousand, and then tomorrow they will say hey we're going to five thousand nobody knows anything except the whale the whale has tons of money to control the market but so just forget about, about all these people, seriously. If you have three, three years horizon from uh, three to four years horizon, I don't think it matters. As long as you're not buying Bitcoin at 100,000, right? <laughs> so, I mean, to me, it's getting ridiculous. All this uh, analysis saying different thing and all that. I mean, to me, I would not buy when people FOMO in. I don't like that. But sometimes, uh, I don't know, people just, I don't know. So CryptoBird is saying that I took 25% profit to Fiat as planned. So an average 9.2K after bearish 12-hour uh, momentum cross. So this is just based on his trade, not a financial advice. And Bitcoin Marco is saying that if a pay group leader doesn't want to show you how much Bitcoin he owns, ask him to post a photo of his house instead. 99.9% .9 of them talk a big game but are broke. Why are you listening to a crown who live in a tiny one-bedroom apartment? <laughs> Aren't you trying to become wealthy? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, that is very true. I mean, some people probably living in a one-bedroom apartment. Why are you listening to them? Hello, right? <laughs> well, the thing is, like, uh, I I actually know some people. They live in a one tiny uh, one-bedroom apartment, but then they have. They own several properties. Okay, they live very modestly. So they drive. Uh, they drive a very um, <laughs> uh, like they drive an entry level vehicle. They don't. They don't show off or anything, and yet they own so many real estate. So don't underestimate the people who live in one tiny bedroom apartment. Uh, I mean, those are just materialistic stuff. I mean, if you own a big house, it doesn't mean anything. I mean. <laughs> Because I, I know that people own a big house, they are broke as well. So, and I know that people who own several properties, uh, they, 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 they live very, they live below their means and they drive a junk car too. So you cannot tell people based on their appearance. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Uh, let's see. And Peter Brand, okay. Peter Brand is talk about something interesting. I want to see, uh, talk about it. It's important as well. Uh, 
And Peter Brand uh, basically make the right call. Make the right call when uh, Bitcoin was at around four thousand. He said uh, it's going to have a parabolic move, and it is exactly what happened. We have a parabolic move since April. Right now it's only June. We already nine thousand. So how to beat FOMO? This is very important. Have a preconceived trading plan that uh, precludes chasing market rallies and dips. Only end the trade that are subject to orders, pace a day or at least several hours in advance. Only rewind stop and target orders once each day or on a predetermined schedule. Turn off your computer, watching market action only accentuate formal behavior, develop an accounting accountability relationship with other traders who have access to your trading record. Realize that successful trading is not so much a quantitative endeavor as it is a battle against, against your own inner demons. That is very true. Basically, your emotion. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, before you enter or exit a trade, you have to have your plan already as a disciplined investor or a disciplined trader. So you've got to have a plan. You cannot just FOMO in for nothing. Um, but it's up to you how you want to do. Uh, or you can use this uh, mere multiple indicator, but I don't know how accurate is this. So, but based on... The data that they pull is based on I think ten I think nine years of data seems to be okay too. But I don't know. Not a financial advice. You do whatever you want. I think if you don't have time to look at it every day, just uh for example, you you have your four one k right. You have your four one k. Uh, you put some money uh every two weeks in your pay pay period or whatever in your four one k. You can do the same thing. You can set aside some money. You pay, uh, you just buy every two weeks or every whatever weeks. Uh, to buy some cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, it's up to you. Not a financial advice. Use your due diligence. You do whatever you want. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. You got to use your own diligence. But you know, when you look at so many people, the YouTuber, even though they are very uh, experienced, almost ten or twenty years trading experience, or they used to work in Wall Street as a trader, they don't know. They just say, "Hey, today uh, we're going to go up all the way to twelve thousand. Tomorrow they were saying that they're going to." Uh, Bitcoin is going to down to 7,000 or 6,000. Just forget it, man. <laughs> Even though you, you look at the technical analysis, they, they still cannot make the right call. Come on. This is just probability. Like how much, how high this will go this way and how high it will go that way. But I mean, if you have a three year horizon, you don't have to be, I don't, I'm not worried. I'm pretty, very bullish in long run in two to three years. And don't forget, we have halfening, halfening coming up for the Bitcoin as well next year, 2020, May. So, if you found this video helpful, smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, also share with your friends. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out the upcoming airdrop or token swap. Also, you can follow me on Twitter as well. Um, make sure you comment below as well. I would love to hear from you. And um, yeah, that will help out my channel. So uh, remember, crypto deep divers, we the people take control of our money. Stay wise, stay safe, peace. I'm not a financial advisor. Investing in cryptocurrency or other altcoins can have uh, potential risk pieces of due diligence.